there's been unrest in Zinumbu's camp. As um, we heard that uh, Peter Obi answered questions thrown at him by himself in Chatham House during his media chat. The presidential candidate of the Labour Party, Mr. Peter Obi, had a media chat at Chatham House where he tackled questions on how he would deal with the economy of Nigeria if elected president. <laughs> he answered the questions himself. Meanwhile, the power sector, the Biafra Yoruba Nation, Nation Agitation, health sector, education sector, and so much more in no particular order. Okay, and some of the questions uh, that was answered by Peter Obi well, was asked when you have this uh, massive poverty level where 63% of the nation is poor, you are doing, you are going to create all sorts of problems. I spoke to a British minister this morning and told him that we have about 40% unemployment rate and with youth. It's 60%. Young people in their productive age are doing nothing. If you have this unemployment rate in Britain today, you are going to have massive agitation and nobody will be able to leave their homes. So what you are seeing is a cum cumulative effect of leadership failures over the years, which will be solved by good governance. When people start seeing justice, fairness, and inclusive governments, all these things will start reversing themselves. People agitate even in my house. And I talk to them in the area of earth sector. We have a problem with earth. We have underinvested, and because our government has not even prioritized our development agenda, everybody knows that the only measure of development that is recognized globally today is the Human Development Index. This is inch on three things life expectancy which we are low on our life expectancy today is less than 60 years as against the global average of 72 years so we are low same with education so it is to prioritize that in the past five years nigeria's budget for earth is under 2.5 trillion naira that is unacceptable for over 200 million people you have to put more money into key development areas when uh, what separates rich and poor countries, education and healthcare, we have big nations that have been able to reset their health sectors. India and Indonesia, for example, if we don't know how to do it, we learn from them. There is nothing bad in learning. And in the area of health uh, power sector, he said, let me give you assurance on what we are campaigning on. You have heard them say we don't have structures. That is the structure we are trying to destroy. Structure of criminality. That is what I mentioned. That Nigeria is being held captive. That structure has impoverished Nigeria. We will dismantle it. It will not be there. We are going to turn around the power sector. Nigeria generates about five to 6,000 megawatts of electricity for 200 million people. South Africa with 60 million people generate 40 to 50,000 megawatts. And South Africa, in the past past three months has declared an emergency in power so if a country like that declare an emergency what do you think we will do we will declare power war and if anybody stands in that in the way so be it in bringing bringing back foreign investors foreign investors and uh, the country are like a bee and honey all you need to do is to create the honey and the way the bees will find it is very simple foreign capital is sacred is scared of corruption yeah foreign capital is scared of corruption is scared of board policies and is scared and there is no rule of law you need a great environment that makes it conducive to work you need to secure it that is at the heart of what dati and i are offering we will build those intangible assets of security, making sure that there is a rule of law. And we will fight corruption. Dati has a record of being the only House of Assembly member who refused to buy properties of government when it was offered to all National Assembly members. You can go and check his record. The first thing 
about stopping corruption is yourself. On capital, Obi said, there is nothing wrong in borrowing. Borrowing is a legitimate way of getting capital. Every country in the world borrows. Even Britain, as we speak, owes over 70% of its GDP. Every government I know lives on borrowing. Even Norway, with 1.4 trillion sovereign wealth, is borrowing. The third biggest economy in the world is America. Their debt almost 100% of their GDP. For China, it's almost 60% of their GDP. Japan owes over 230 percent of its GDP but let me tell you the difference Japan is owing over 230 percent of its GDP they invested the money to save its economy but when you borrow for consumption you have a crisis Nigeria in 2015 had a GDP per capita of two thousand five hundred and fifty dollar and they were owed about 15 trillion naira but today we are owing about 75 trillion naira so we have grown that debt by about 400 percent but our per capita is two thousand dollar that means that the money we borrowed was thrown away so we will restructure the debt as it is today to be able to pay it i am a finance person so no more borrowing for consumption on ethnic tensions he said the ethnic tension you see today are as a result of Injustice, unfairness, exclusion, marginalization, and others. As soon as you start reversing those, the tension starts reducing. As long as you start building an inclusive society where people's hard work and talents match up with their opportunities, you start seeing those things go down. And on the issue of challenges in government, I have dealt with those challenges at the Anambra level and i assure you it is the same challenge as long as you are not involved in transactional governance you can deal with anybody we have existential threats there is no sacred cow you are either in nigeria or you look for another country we want a country with a rule of law it will be a level playing field for everybody i want to solve the problem on climate change as you see today we have a situation where the flooding in Nigeria is causing issues. I have said it consistently. This is not difficult. We have awarded contracts for it in the past. Today, every Egyptian will tell you, no Nile, no Egypt. The river Niger is 4,200 kilometers long. The river Benue is 1,400 kilometers long. So both of them are 5,600 kilometers long. If Egypt can maintain the river Nile, Nigeria is big enough to maintain the river Niger and Benue. On education, hmm. we will ensure that basic education is free. We have 20 million out of school children in the north, which I have said I will deal with decisively. Most of these children have learned the Quran, which means they are intelligent. We will meet them at the point and teach them a skill. For tertiary education, we must find a way to fund it in a cooperative way and the public partnership to ensure that four years of education is four years on debt servicing we are not the only country to owe once we move from consumption to production we will be able to service our debts oh my god <laughs> spot on oh, i know that uh, uh, mr uh are you or mr bajabi amila or mr wiki we are answer it even when they ask you about your health, you say the women leader should answer it. Spot on. Spot on or spot on. And that is why they are so there's unrest in the camp of a APC because they really <laughs> they really they really messed up. The most qualified candidate, vibrant, intelligent, we can't even wait to vote for Labour Party come to February. We are all battle ready to vote out APC and PDP. They have damaged this country, nation called Nigeria. Tinubu cannot come out and say anything. The only thing will just be accusing Atiku, accusing Kwapanso, accusing uh, OBG and uh, Pitaobi. Intelligent man, God bless you for the effort you have put in. This is a man for the job. Let us forget about ethnic bigotry and vote for this man. Nigeria will be good again. Please, I am from Ondo State. Let's tell ourselves the truth 
we assure you the Jagaban be able to answer even one question correctly the answer is no uh, uh. <coughs> they don't they don't they don't want good thing that is it nigerians did you hear mr peter B? did he refer to anybody or failure of past government or indicting any person he answered the questions directly that is why we need debate among the presidential candidates to streamline their position on national issues Omar, i'm beginning to love this man i think nigeria have a candidate here that can represent her anywhere a great material and a peculiar gift this man brain pieces nigerians don't love Nigerians don't love you for nothing, Mr. President. Very brilliant individual, electorate prefer your credibility. Powerful responses. Our uh, incoming president of Nigeria, Mr. Peter Obi, your credibility, integrity, capacity, wisdom, transparency, and many more are divine. May God of obedience grant us victory in February 25th. Hmm. So guys, let's hear your opinion and have your take on this.